Hello and welcome. My name is Alan and we are back with more Diary of Break. Yeah. I don't know why I did that. Don't ask me. This is a late video. I don't care. It was Tuesdays. I'm just behind a little bit. So whatever. Let's jump into this. Sunday, July the 11th, 1943. Dear Kitty, to get back to the subject of child rearing for the umpteenth time, let me tell you that I'm doing my best to be helpful, friendly, and kind, and to do all I can to keep the rain of rebukes down to a light drizzle. It's not easy trying to behave like a model child with people you can't stand, especially when you don't mean a word of it. But I can see that a little hypocrisy hypocrisy, gets me a lot further than my old method of saying exactly what I think, even though no one ever asks my opinion or cares one way or another. Of course, I often forget my row and find it impossible to curb my anger when they're unfair so that they spend the next month saying I'm the most impertinent girl in the world. Don't you think I'm to be pitied sometimes? It's a good thing I'm not going to I'm not the grouchy type because then I might become sour and bad tempered. I can usually see the humorous side of their scoldings, but it's easier when someone else is being raked over the coals. Further, I've decided after a great deal of thought to drop the shorthand. First, so that I have more time for my other subjects and second because of my eyes that's a sad story I've become very nearsighted and should have had glasses ages ago uh, won't I look like a dope but as you know people in hiding can't yesterday all anyone here could talk about was Anne's eyes because mother had suggested I go to the ophthalmologist with Mrs. Kleiman. Just hearing this made my knees weak since I'm no since it's no small matter going outside. Just think of it, walking down the street. I can't imagine it. I was petrified at first and then glad. Because it's not as simple as all that. The various authorities who had to approve such a step were unable to reach a quick decision. They first had to carefully weigh all the difficulties and risks, though Miep was ready to set off immediately with me in tow. In the meantime, I'd taken my gray coat from the closet but it was so small, it looked as if it might have belonged to my sister. We lowered the hem, but I still couldn't button it. I'm really curious to see what they decide. Only I don't think they'll ever work out a plan because the British have landed in Sicily and father's all set for a quick finish. Bep's been giving Margot and me a lot of office work to do. It makes us both feel important. And it's a big help to her. Anyone can file letters and make entries in a sales book, but we do it with remarkable accuracy. Me has so much to carry she looks like a pack mule she goes 
forth nearly every day to scrounge up vegetables and then bicycles back with her purchases in large shopping bags. She's also the one who brings five library books with her every Saturday. We long for Saturdays because that means books. We're like a bunch of little kids with a present. Ordinary people don't know how much books can mean to someone who's cooped up. Our diversions are reading, studying, and listening to the radio. Yours, Anne. Tuesday, July the 13th, 1943. The best little table. Yesterday afternoon, Father gave me permission to ask Mr. Dussel whether he would please be so good as to allow me, see how polite I am, to use the table in our room two afternoons a week from 4 to 5.30. I already sit there every day from 2.30 to 4 while Dussel takes a nap. But the rest of the time, the room and the table are off limits to me. It's impossible to study next door in the afternoon because there's too much going on. Besides, Father sometimes likes to sit at the desk during the afternoon. So it seemed like a reasonable request, and I asked Dussel very politely, What do you think the learned gentleman's reply was? No. Just plain no. I was incensed and wasn't about to let myself be put off like that. I asked him the reason for his no, but this didn't get me anywhere. The gist of his reply was, I have to study too, you know, and I can't do that. In the afternoons, I won't be able to fit it all in at all. I have to finish the task I've set for myself, otherwise there's no point in starting. Besides, you aren't serious about your studies. Mythology, what kind of work is that? Reading and knitting don't count either. I use that table and I'm not going to give it up. I replied, Mr. Dussel, I do take my work seriously. I can't study next door in the afternoons, and I would appreciate it if you would reconsider my request. Having said these words, the insulted Anne turned around and pretended the learned doctor wasn't there. I was seething with rage and felt that Dussel had been incredibly rude, which he certainly had been, and that I'd been very polite. That evening, when I managed to get a hold of Pim, I told him what had happened and we discussed what my next step should be, because I had no intention of giving up and preferred to deal with the matter myself. Pim gave me a rough idea of how to approach Dussel, but cautioned me to wait until the next day since I was in such a flat. I ignored this last piece of advice and waited for Dussel after the dishes had been done. Pim was sitting next door and had, and that had a calming effect. I began, Mr. Dussel, you seem to believe further discussion of the matter is pointless, but I beg you to reconsider. Dussel gave me his most charming smile and said, I'm always prepared to discuss the matter, even though it's already been settled. I went on talking, despite Dussel's repeated interruptions. When you first came here, I said, we agreed that the room was to be shared by the two of us. If we were to divide it fairly, you'd have the entire morning and I'd have the entire afternoon. I'm not asking for that much. But two afternoons a week does seem reasonable to me. Dussel leapt out of his chair as if he'd sat on a pin. You have no business talking about your rights to the room. Where am I supposed to go? Maybe I should ask Mr. Van Don to build me a cubbyhole in the attic. You're not the only one who can't find a quiet place to work. You're always looking for a fight. If your sister Margot, who has more right to workspace than you do, had come 
to me with the same request, I'd never even have thought of refusing. But you? And once again, he brought up the business about the mythology and the knitting, and once again, Anne was insulted. However, I showed no sign of it and let Dussel finish. But no, it's impossible to talk to you. You're shamefully self-centered. No one else matters as long as you get your way. I've seen... I've never seen such a child, but after all is said and done, I'll be obliged to let you have your way since I don't want people saying later on that Anne Frank failed her exams because Mr. Dussel refused to relinquish his table. He went on and on until there was such a deluge of words I could hardly keep up. For one fleeting moment, I thought, Him and his lies. I'll smack his ugly mug so hard he'll be bouncing off the wall. But the next moment, I thought, Calm down. He's not worth getting so upset about. At long last, Mr. Dussel's fury was spent and... He left the room with an expression of triumph mixed with wrath, his coat pockets bulging with food. I went running over to father and recounted the entire story, at least, or at least those parts he hadn't been able to follow himself. Pym decided to talk to Dussel that very same evening, and they spoke for more than half an hour. They first discussed whether Anne should be allowed to use the table, yes or no. Father said that he and Dussel had dealt with the subject once before, at which time he'd professed to agree with Dussel that he didn't want to contradict the elder in front of the younger, but that even then he hadn't thought it was fair. Dussel felt I had no right to talk as if he were an intruder laying claim to everything in sight, but Father protested strongly since he himself had heard me say nothing of the kind. And so the conversation went back and forth with Father defending my selfishness and my busy work and Dussel grumbling the whole time. Dussel finally had to give in, and I was granted the opportunity to work without interruption two, week or two afternoons of the week. Dussel looked very sullen, didn't speak for me, to me for two days, and made sure he occupied the table from 5 to 5.30, all very childish, of course. Anyone who's so petty and pedantic at the age of 54 was born that way and is never going to change. But yeah, that will end this episode here. It'll be a short one. Uh, but yeah. We get a bit of conflict between Anne and Dussel, and Dussel's using the fact that, oh, I'm an adult, I have more right than you. That, that kind of petty bullshit. It's like, dude, you can spare time. Don't be such a bastard, alright? You know you can spare time. You're not at it every fucking moment. You know you're not. It's pettiness, honestly. But yeah. It's, it's, people like that are so stupid. Don't be a dick. 
that's probably the best lesson you can learn in life. Don't be a dick just to be a dick. You know, you, the old saying, you attract more with honey than you do with shit. But yeah. getting tired anyway we're getting pretty close to the center of the book which is a bunch of pages but we've still got a little ways to go it's been a while since I've read the diary of Anne Frank I remember reading it in high school and I can't believe it's one of the books that some people tried to ban it. I'm like, what are we, back in Nazi fucking Germany banning books? The great majority of the books they try to ban, there's no fucking reason to ban them. It's just dumb fuckery. That's why I hate fuckers who ban books. Yes, there are some books that can be held for later age to be read, but there are some that are perfectly normal. Diary of Anne Frank. This is written by a teenage girl. It's her thoughts at that age. Teenagers are, should be more than able to fucking read it. I'm going to have to find a bunch more of banned books just because that pisses me off and they need to be read so people can find them because, yeah, fuck these people who want to ban them. You're the kind of people that would rather fuck everybody else over at your own convenience. And, yeah, it's pettiness. But anyway, we'll end this episode here. As always, educate thyself, think, read, study, learn. Someone tells you something you have trouble believing, ask them to cite their sources. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Until then... Later.